Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the workshop. It is fantastic to be bringing you along for another day here as I attempt a project which is so far out of my comfort zone, it's absurd, as I attempt a project which has techniques and skills that I'm trying for the first time. This is day 13 of working on a Damascus steel Viking sword. It's a pleasure to bring you along. The first thing that I need to get cracking on now is engraving the border in the lower guard. percent of the way there maybe doesn't sound like much but I'm pretty excited because we've got some straight lines on this piece it started off the first cut of the day was really 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 poor I ended up having to just scratch over the surface and get rid of the scribe lines I made and make new scribe lines which were much bolder and easier to work to all the following grooves went a lot better and I'm starting to slowly but surely get my confidence with doing the simple stuff like cutting a straight line. I want to take a moment to interrupt and thank today's sponsor, which is Vikings War of Clans. We're able to make these episodes because of their support. So let me tell you a little bit about them. Viking War of Clans was inspired by the roleplayer games of the 90s that you all love to play. What makes the game so addictive is that the 20 million online players are constantly changing the way the game evolves. As you've heard me say in previous episodes that Vikings have sponsored, whether it is that you want to just fight as many people as possible, whether it is that you want to build your own empire, whether it is you want to join up in a team of people, whatever your preferred play style, Vikings War of Clans has you covered. You can support this channel by downloading Vikings War of Clans for free at the links in the description box down below, and you're going to get the special bonus of 200 gold and protection shield. So once you're done watching, make sure you go to that link in the description and download Vikings War of Clans. Thank you, Vikings War of Clans, for sponsoring this episode. We need to jump right into the next step. And so the next step is I need to get serious. I need to get completely serious about the exact final design and I'm gonna use this graph paper to create two scale drawings of what it is that we need to put on this. I certainly don't have any idea what it is that I'm doing. I certainly am green to engraving greener than anything. But what I am pretty confident of is that without proper design and proper planning at this stage, I'm just shooting myself in the foot for the work on the final pieces. So what that has done is that has shown me that obviously we have two different rectangles to fill, which means that the beasts need to uh, be shaped and proportioned in certain different ways. Our small upper guard beast can be a little more scrunched in, a little more aggressively sinusoidaling. This one a little less so. In the test piece from yesterday, I ended up cutting away a piece of the beast that was not meant to be the background, but it was meant to be a piece of the beast. And so what I've done to hopefully help make it really clear what we need to remove eventually is I've also shaded it. And and then I drew the lines in with felt tip. What? Felt tip. Is that not felt tip? And then I drew the lines in with pen because I want to get down. You can see right here where the mane of the beast comes across. It wraps over the top of the beast's neck. I know for sure, without a doubt, that I am going to end up 
cutting across that mane at some point or cutting across the tail at some point and hopefully the felt tip pen is gonna get me from 50% failure rate on the mane and the tail to maybe I'm gonna be happy with 25% failure rate on cutting across my mane or tail honestly we're gonna be good with that hopefully that pen will help what we're gonna get started on is the upper guard because it is the smallest piece and because it's the easiest one to remake if I make a mistake when I make a mistake now let's stick with if let's stick with if I've got these marked out as a and B I am gonna make such a huge amount of mistakes on this. I just, I just know it. <gasps> Let's be clear here, Alec. Side A faces up. This is side A. A for Alec. A for awesome. A for I'm totally gonna mess this up. And with that, we begin. It's the moment of truth, I've got it penciled out. I looked at it, we did those final shots of the pencil drawing and I thought, you know what, it was a little unbalanced. I ended up pushing that, uh, that rear of the beast forwards just a tiny little bit. The design feels a lot better looking. I'm gonna start doing a very faint line with a square graver and I am terrified. I am so terrified. I'm so nervous, it's unbelievable. Mm, I am way out of my depth. Here we go. Well, that's one line. Alrighty, we've got the lines traced out with our square graver. There were a few slip ups, but regardless, I think it's now time to move on to the flat graver to cut ourselves the groove for the wire. So here's where we are right now. I have most of the lines roughed in with a flat graver. It's all looking rather rough in this area here where our tails and the mane intertwine. It's also looking rough at the tip of the scroll. So what I'm gonna have to do is take some extra care getting in here and removing that material in these tiny little areas. Once we've got that sorted, it's gonna be time to move on to undercutting all the lines with our trusty on -glet graver. So I've just taken a second here because I don't feel like I'm headed in the right direction with the tools and the cleanliness of the cut. And I, I think that there is something that I can change up. So after touching up that scroll a little bit, it's still rough. The lines are still rough and the back edge, the heel of my tool is dragging in there. And it's just, I, th I think it could be better. I think it could be better. And so I thought to myself, I need to do more studying. I need to, I need to get back to that book that I had a look at. You know, one of the things that I find is, okay, I can have a look at the book the first time. I can have a look at a tutorial the first time, but it doesn't really sink in quite as much as then after I've got some better context, after I've got a little bit of a better understanding of actually how to do it by hand. Then when I go back to it, it makes so much more sense because I've got an intuitive understanding now after having worked doing some engravings of of what the face of a tool is for and what the heel of a tool is for. Quick little recap. Engraving tools generally have two bevels. Your primary bevel is called the face and this is what points upwards. And then you have a bevel at the bottom called a heel, which is in the material and allows you to tilt down or tilt up and control your depth of cut. And it also gives this tiny cutting edge some support against all the loading that we're putting against it. But you can imagine if we're trying to cut a curve, 
this here is going to then end up fouling on the material of our curve if the heel is too long. So I got a little bit of the understanding from the reading before and then the practical experience, but I wanted to go back to the book. So I just had a quick look. And there was a section where the book talks about cutting the scrolls. And it talks about some different tool angles. What I'd initially been doing was trying to shoot freehand for a 45 degree face and like a 15 degree heel. Turns out, I had like a 60 degree face and a 15 degree heel, which is bad anyway. Like that's not good and it's not helping me get a good consistent clean cut. And so having just worked that out, that that was what I was cutting with on my flat graver and my onglet, I know I need to change that up. But what I also want to do is I want to also be able to try getting my tool up out of the cut some more. And so maybe trying a 40 degree face and a 35 degree heel to really pull that tool up and out to mean that instead of my tool running at this angle in the cut where you have we have all this material of the graver fouling on your groove i want the angles of my tool to enable me to make the cut at more of this angle here so it means that we're gonna have to make this angle significantly shallower than it currently is and then have a very very short a much higher angle on our heel to get that tool up and out of the cut and we'll see how much better that performs. So what I want to do is I want to try this at the right angle in case it does help and it does work better. I'm not sure if that's going to entirely work. So then if that doesn't work, we'll then make another tool or maybe another couple of tools while we're at it that then have some different angles because we're also going to want an onglet with that 40, 35 degree angle if we go by the book. All right, let's see what 15 degrees looks like. I'll give it a quick look under the loop. Give it a little loop-de-loop. -loop. It's got a teeny tiny heel on it. You can see that 45 degree face. Hugely different looking to what I had earlier. Let's try it. I'm gonna try and clean up this line right here. Wow, it likes to dig. Oh no, this isn't, this isn't at all. It's fouled it a huge amount because I'm so much lower because that cutting angle with the 45 degree face wants to be much lower. Ah, okay. As I come around this corner here, now that I have the new proper angles for cutting straight lines, it's much lower cutting angle than my 50 or 60 degree I had before. So the back edge, not the heel though, because the heel is teeny tiny, but the back edge of the tool right here is cutting and fouling on our material. That means, got to make another tool. So, we have four gravers, four new gravers. Our first one is a thinner standard angle graver according to the book. We have ourselves a 45 degree face and a 15 degree heel. Our next one is the same thickness as the graver we have been using but with that lofted up heel. So it's got a 35 degree heel to hopefully get it out of there. And then we have a very thin and fine onglet. Again, that is a lofted up onglet with that 35 degree heel. Hopefully these two are gonna be very helpful. I also made myself a little tiny, tiny pointy punch, which Lane Zulk has told me can be useful for getting that inlay into the point of a scroll. And I think it might be useful for getting the inlay into the, uh, into the points of our tails here. And so thank you very much for that tip, Lane. Let's try and give these tools go, see if we can clean up our cuts. So here we go with our new lofted bevel. We'll see how she works and if it fouls. Ah, uh, there's a little bit of fouling. It's diving down a lot. I wonder if that's because of that 40 degree face that we put on it instead of the much more obtuse face that I had on earlier. Is this helping? That's the question. And I'm not entirely sure. I was really hoping for a huge success right about now. Oh yes, it's worked. It's fantastic. I'm just not sure. So I'm really sorry. That would just tell such a good story for the YouTube video. However, I guess it doesn't. That's not always how the mop flops. Oh, there's a big, significant amount of fouling. It just dived right down. I'm gonna try lifting up that heel angle. I feel like a 40 degree heel. See if that tool can come out even further. Let's chisel this excess. Okay, I'm much higher out of the cut now that that heel angle is a little higher up. Oh, oh yes. Mm. Oh, I can come around that corner so much better. Oh. Hello. I think that the mop has flopped and the mop has flopped. Pointing in the right direction. I think that 40 degree heel angle is a, is a winner. My tool is all the way out. The cut looks a little cleaner. I think this is indeed an improvement. And so I think this allows us a good stopping point for the day and a half. I am very grateful to have you join along with us. Have you come along this journey of learning? And I hope you'll stick around for tomorrow's episode because we're gonna get some gold in this and start on background removal. Thank you very much. Don't forget, go download Vikings. They are sponsoring this episode. The link is in the description. 
Hmm, that actually is fouling it. Maybe this isn't the best solution. But I will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.